Okay, you are able to see my screen, right? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. So just we'll walk through over the course over here, which I'll be covering. So the first topic we'll be uh, seeing is like, uh, what is the Google Cloud architecture? How your organization look like in a Google Cloud environment? Like, what are organization? What are the folders, projects, resource, building, APIs, and all? So for example, I'll just show you. So this is like a temporary lab environment. Uh, so here you can see you know, the lab duration is almost one hour. So it depends upon the type of the lab uh, which you are you know, using the website that you flag. So if you have a joint laptop, then I can help you with the setting up of this lab, or we can see it on next class also. So here I'll just walk through. Okay, so this is the Google Cloud environment. What we are seeing is like, you know, how your organization looks like in a Google Cloud environment. What are the organization, folder, project, resource, building, and APIs. So here, if we see, this is the top level. You no, know, this is the top button where you can find find the structural other architecture of in company Okay, so since this is a temporary project, you know, we can't uh, register an organization here. So organization is nothing but uh, your uh, top level domain. Uh, let's say your company is uh, something like you're working for you know, visualpart.com. So in the right about this no organization, here it will be visualpart.com. And inside visualpart.com, what we have, we have folders. So folders is nothing but, you know, uh, various departments like in a, your company might be having sales finance hr and all so inside that folder we'll be having specific department those how we can group that and inside that we have projects like projects is where our actual resources are defined so if we so this is one type of project google cloud shell so this is one project where we have all the resources related to uh, Google Cloud Shell project. And if you want to go to another kind of project, then this is the other one, like Cube Labs. So, based on the projects and all, it will uh, you know, change the resources also. Mm. And building is like how you are, uh, no, how your resources will be built for the Google Cloud. Like everything needs to be having an account, right? So, how your resource, like how your compute engine is charged, how your machines are charged, how your data is charged. So, those sorts of things will be seen in the uh, building criteria. And API is like an you know, application program interface where various uh, services of Google will communicate with each other. Uh, let's say google cloud is having one windows machine and it is having one database so how the windows machine will be uh, communicated with the database that is with the help of the uh, apis so g cloud is nothing but uh, your uh, cmd like for uh, windows we have uh, cmd right uh, like the command based
okay so this is for the windows so similar to that for uh, g cloud uh, google cloud we have this activate cloud shell so instead of you know uh, going through the console and selecting each and everything and if you are comfortable with the command line uh, thing then you can uh, use the uh, g cloud option so you just need to activate it just click here it will take some less than a minute to get provision it so if this is nothing but a you know uh, bash kind of thing so if you know little if you are coming from little background of uh, linux and all then you'll be able to uh, you know uh, use this so this is like uh, you know all the uh, all the interfaces are like the linux only so based on that you can create a machine you can delete a machine you can communicate uh, with the all other services here and next thing is next thing is iam iam is like you know how the authorization is going to get handled in the google cloud what are the various types of roles we have in google cloud and uh, you know how we can create our own uh, rules and what are the best practices when it comes to iam while implementing the uh, google cloud and a compute engine is like the main component of the uh, google cloud so it is nothing but your uh, machines like your lindo like uh, linux on the windows machine and what are the different types of machines available uh, regions and so on what are snapshot auto scaling and load balancing so for this i just show you one interface so where we can find all our resources in the left side navigation menu if you go so if you go there in uh, under compute we have compute engine so just click here Let me refresh. Okay, so this from uh, this you know we can create our machine. So if you go to create instance,
Okay, by that time it will come. Okay, same match. I don't know why the console is low. So by the time it will come, we move to other slides. And once we come, we will be you know, going through the work process of the creating the footage. So after compute engine, uh, we will be going through cloud storage. Cloud storage is nothing but, uh, you know, if you are, uh, let's say, free storage, like you can store anything here except the databases. Like what are the different type of storage classes we have? You know what are the life cycle management and how to access the bucket. So storage class is like you know how we are going to access the bucket, how we are going to access the object in the storage class. Like you are having a data which you want to access on a, a monthly basis, then you will be putting those uh, uh, files in one type of bucket. And there are other uh, kind of files which we will be accessing like once in a year. Then you will be putting those files in other type of the buckets so based on that we have different type of storage classes and life cycle management is like uh, you know uh, let's say after uh, after 60 days you want to move those files from one storage class to another for that we'll be using uh, you know uh, life cycle management so you no need to do that manually we just need to set up or schedule it and how to access the bucket is like how you are going to access those, those uh, objects in the so that by using uh, uh, you know uh, IAM policies or ACL, so like that. Arjun, so, this cloud storage yeah. is all same as AWS, right? Uh, bucket you know, bucket you're telling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. IAM buckets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, AWS. If we compare uh, for com EC2, we have compute engine. Okay. Like in AWS, we have EC2, right? For Win uh, machine, Linux and Windows. So terminology and all the same. Yeah, terminology and all the same. But there are some difference. Like AWS doesn't have a concept of uh, this uh, organization, folders, projects, resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. AWS don't have a concept of this one. Like if you want to create, uh, you know, free environment, uh, let's say uh, development quality and uh, production then i think you need to create different uh, three separate accounts in aws okay. okay but when when it comes to google cloud here you can see like within this thing only we can create uh, like here you can see here on top you can create uh, uh, you know development then uh, let's say quality then production so some some are, some things are different and some things are like almost uh, similar. So like here, okay. if you can see like AWS, AWS, uh, yeah, I think uh, you know here we will be giving the name of the compute engine or the you know EC2 our machines. So if we if give cap, it won't take. This is just the naming convention of the machine. So if we give my machine and label label is nothing but how you are going to you know identify your machine like owner who will be the owner of the machine and what will be the role of the machine which is db or something like that so that we can give here and next thing is the region like if you can see these are the regions available in the you know, gcp so so in India, if you see, we have Delhi and Mumbai, and Delhi they have recently introduced. And uh, one specialty about uh, GCP compared to other uh, cloud providers is like for each uh, region they have you know, three separate zones. If you check Mumbai, so we'll be having uh, Asia South one A, South one B, South one C. Similarly, if we check uh, Delhi, which was uh, recently introduced. So South A, B, C. So these are the you know based on the customer and uh, you know our the uh, location of the company. You know we can place these things. 
and next thing is the machine family like how you are going to what kind of machines we want we want general purpose or computer optimized so these are the categories e2 n2 e2 is like cpu based and like for normally testing and all we'll be using n1 so and this is the cpu machine type like shared core e2 standard like here you can say don't go for this name it, it will be like you know they have mentioned some naming criteria just that you have two cpu 8 gb ram four cpu 16 gb eight cpu 32 gb so those things and if we go here so here is where the boot disk will be having boot disk is nothing but you know what type of operating system we want our machines so in debian we have you know uh, centos debian uh, red hat sql ubuntu windows server everything we have and that how those are public images and custom images see we don't have any custom images right now custom image is nothing but uh, what we have created for example we provisioned a machine from the public images and we installed some software you know so those will be our uh, the uh, images created by user and if you want to create the similar machine so if you go to the custom images go to the project which we have created that images and select that machine and if you want to uh, create some snapshot which we have taken then we can do that or existing disk that is also similar for that. And this is like uh, how uh, your machine, like your disk particular machine, my machine is going to have communication with the other uh, DCP services. So we can, if we go here, set access for each API. So uh, BigQuery is a data warehouse services in. Uh, Google Cloud. So here you can see how you can, uh, like BigQuery, it can uh, read data from you know, other resources. So this we can give none of enable. The best example will be, uh, yeah, start driver, which is nothing but your uh, monitoring agent. Like uh, if your uh, application is experiencing some latency or some issue or error or something, then uh, you can enable this tag driver login. So those also we can control from here. We can give uh, you know different type of access if we want to uh, write something into it, uh, read or pull. So based on that, we can give you know stack driver access on that. And this is the thing which I talked about, like storage. For example, your machine wants to write something into the bucket. So for that, uh, where is it? Uh, yeah, storage. So for that, we can give write only. And if your machine wants to uh, read something from the bucket, then you can give read only. And if you want both, give read and write and full of based on that. Then this is the part of networking which we'll be uh, seeing later. So if we go to the bucket here, so bucket will be under uh, storage. So here you can see, if we go to storage, So this is like you know other uh, cloud provider when it comes to the naming convention of the bucket, the, which is like uh, you know uh, the naming convention of the bucket should be unique. For example, if I give my name, see here uh, showing that bucket name is already taken. If I give Dave also, it will show bucket because these those names are very common you know, and uh, these names are already taken. So what the best practices will follow in uh, you know, real time project is like, one thing we can do is like we can go here and just put the project ID. Because project ID will be unique in, uh, all across the globe. So if we give, okay, okay hyphens are not, okay. Uh, I think okay, because this is a, 
usually product id don't have this uh, you know alpha numeric thing it will be having something like uh, let's see if they give this one part day see it is taken because this uh, this is a maybe the simple computer right usual part and nobody has created any bucket on that so that is why it is taken and if you go here so this is like where you want to store your data like if your company is a in a global company then you can store it on a multi region and uh, if it is like dual region then we can go for that and if your if your company is only compared to one particular region then we can have region bucket so uh, i think if here if we compare with the uh, aws s3 bucket i think s3 is a global resources like it is like you know if you want to store something then you only have one option just s3 we can't specify the location in s3 yeah. but in uh, gcp yeah so uh, if in uh, gcp you have multi region dual region and uh, lower region and uh, location also if we can see you okay us europe and asia on this they have we can't be selecting in region specific uh, but uh, and zone specific we can will be selecting only the region specific uh, if we go here so this is the thing i was talking about the storage class like if you want to you know frequently access data you can put it on standard and if you want to back up or once in a month then airline and uh, code line is disaster recovery less than once in a quarter and uh, archive is you know once in a year so i think uh, in uh, in s3 no, i don't remember no. the category ca categorization i think the cold line they were they are referring to the glacier thing is that right in s3 so for that they are referring to i think a uh, cold line or archive so uh, next is like how you can uh, you know uh, control the access to the bucket so if you go to fine grain and if we continue then we will be having object level permission like bucket level permission you can specify through iam or you know acl and all so if you create bucket uh, the bucket will be get created storage now over next is vpc so vpc will be seeing how to create a vpc and what are the subnets and firewall rules then what is shared vpc and what is uh, you know and network pairing and all so we will see whether i can able to access this uh, vpc so vpc will be under the uh, network part so that side you can see so by default uh, you know uh, gcp will be having a default uh, like vpc in on every region here you can see like every default region will be having the vpc this is like gcp specific uh, ip addresses so here you can see we can have every region north east west like from us asia europe australia everything we have now when it comes to we have vpc network pairing so network pairing is like uh, Network pairing is like, for example, we'll be having uh, two domain related to one single company. Uh, let's say if you have visualpart.com, and we have another subsidiary of uh, you know uh, the same visualpart.com. For example, if you have visualpart, uh, let's say you know training.com. So, if you want to communicate between, uh, you know, uh, these two domains, then we'll be using network pairing. So, we'll be going through each and every of them when we look up the look up here and when we're looking for the networking part. So, this is just an you know, overview of that. Like, if you want to, you know, uh, communicate traffic between these two different domains, then we'll be using uh, network pairing. 
and next is the database option which we have in the google cloud we have uh, you know cloud sql big table bigquery cloud spanner and data data store so cloud sql if you uh, check see uh, we have big table big table is like uh, you are uh, let's say in, uh, this is like column based database like uh, this is mainly used for you know uh, if your uh, uh, data is coming from iot specific uh, devices or uh, something like related to you know like uh, the, the data is something related to petabytes of data then we will be using big table and a data store is something like uh, you know uh, if you are developing an application related to mobile or small devices then if you want database on that so we will be using you know a data store and this is a data migration services which uh, uh, you know, will be used to migrate the data from on premise to google cloud and yeah, so this is the main thing, Cloud SQL. So if we go to create instance, so Cloud SQL, we have, you know, these many distributions. We can have MySQL, PostgreSQL and SQL Server. Only these three, uh, you know, categorization is there in GCP. Like for Oracle and all, we don't have anything for that right now. So next is Google Cloud Operation Suite. Uh, here is like, you know, how you are going to monitor your uh, resources. Uh, like I said earlier, if your application is uh, experiencing some latency or user is having some issue, then how you get alerted? And so for that, we will be using you know cloud monitoring, cloud logging, error reporting, and application performance management. Well. And uh, these uh, these services are like mainly for uh, you know, uh, developers. Like if you are uh, if you are coming from a development background. Uh, or a web development background, then we will be uh, you know, uh, like working with these services, like App Engine, which is similar to that, and Kubernetes is like uh, you know if you want to work on if you are coming from a DevOps side or Docker container side, then uh, we'll be having an uh, another services called Kubernetes Engine, and Cloud Deployment Manager is like an automation tool in the uh, GCP. Let's say uh, you know customer is agreed to be on the Google Cloud and everything is set up. And he want to deploy uh, the foundation of the Google Cloud, right? So for that, we'd we'll be using Cloud Deployment Manager. It is like a an automation script. So if you write that script based on the uh, the configuration, and if you just you know just put uh, configure everything, and if you just you know put it on the Google Cloud, then your infra will be created automatically. So the next is like. Uh, this that I just added, uh, you know, like uh, from my project experiences, but I have done from all these years. So we'll be, uh, you know, checking like you know how the customer will be onboarding to Google Cloud. You know, it's like how uh, how the customer uh, organization is defined, like uh, how the IAM is defined, how the networking, logging and monitoring, cloud architecture, building and engagement, and all. And next is the security how the google cloud is handling the security so cloud armor cloud security identity aware proxy. so these are the security services in google cloud so we'll be uh, seeing each this and how the connectivity to google cloud is happening so it is like uh, let's say you have a you, are, you, are, you have an on-premise data center and there is a google cloud data center also right so you want to migrate to uh, your on-premise data to Google Cloud. So how you are going to get connectivity between your on-premise and Google Cloud? So we have these many options like Cloud Interconnect, Partner Interconnect, Transfer Appliance, and VPN. 
So uh, transfer appliances, I mean, these two, if you compare with AWS, it will be like your uh, direct connect. I think uh, direct connect is the name, I think, AWS. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, direct connect, yeah. So for transfer appliance, uh, you heard of uh, AWS Snowball, right? It is like a physical device. Uh, if you are not, Transfer appliance in GCP. If you check it. So it is like a physical device. Here you can see. Which will be you know plugged to your uh, on premise data center and based on the uh, like based on the size of the data and the network. Uh, you know your data will be transferred and once it is uh, done then uh, you can uh, ship it to the google cloud uh, data center then they will do the you know, rest of the task so this is the almost the look similar this thing then other is the, the last thing is the cloud migration so what are the migration types we are having in uh, in general so it will be migration type is like it is general for all the cloud environment you know aws azure and gcp we have you know different migration type like uh, rehost replatform and uh, what are the migration phases and uh, how to get your applications to cloud ready and migrate for compute is actually a tool we used to migrate the google cloud like for aws we are having a cloud endo like similarly for gcp we are having uh, migrate for compute services and uh, last thing is the four steps like uh, what are the things we need to take care once the migration is done and the application is handed over to the uh, let's say the application and the infra team or the customer so those things will be seen so like next class if you are coming joining with the laptop then we can check the lab environment also so uh, for today, I have only, uh, if you have any questions, then I'm happy to. We can create a free account, right? Uh, yeah, sorry? We can create a free account, free account. Uh, no, free account is, uh, no, uh, free account, I'm not sure because uh, earlier they were using, you know, one they day. They use some credits later right, to take 8,000 credits. And no, for, for, for $300, they used to give. Like for $300 services, you know, you can use the Google Cloud services. And earlier they used to give for one year, but now they have reduced to three months. And other thing is like uh, for AWS free trial, you can use any card, right, for creating a free trial. Like you can use any debit card or credit card for any bank, Visa, Mastercard, anything. Uh, but uh, GCP, you might face some problem because uh, GCP will uh, take only you know some cards. Other card they use to decline. So that yeah, is yeah. the thing I. Yeah. So if, if you're having credit card, then it will take. But uh, better we can use this uh, you know Quick Lab environment. Quick Lab. So it okay. is like you know. Yeah, yeah. So it is like. Uh, I got a monthly subscription somehow after searching the internet you know, for some for a week. So if we have, then you know we can practice it. Uh, so the only thing is like the you know, lab will be uh, you know, uh, like decommissioned after an hour based on the uh, duration. Some some are having one hour, some is having thirty minutes an hour. So based on that, we can do. So as you can see, I have created uh, this lab from this cloud operation for GE. So this uh, lab automatically will be get uh, deleted after, you know, 18 or 19 minutes. So this is like, you know, uh, they have uh, built, uh, pre-built environment, I can say. Like they have made a scenario which they can test here. Like if you go for create a virtual machine, See, they have given the steps like how to do that create a virtual machine in cloud console
so there are two parts in this lab if you see the uh, one thing is like uh, i think uh, yeah first thing is like uh, creating to the console and the second one is like if we go here yeah creating new instance c clock like using the command line also so both uh, the scenario we can like, give like free trial we are not sure whether we will burn, you know like whether we'll be using all the resources or not but this is uh, somewhat safe what that part i feel because when i when i went to you know so many uh, like uh, google cloud workshop two three years back they used to provide uh, you know quick lab uh, labs other than they I expected us not to use the free tire credits because we don't know right we might end up uh, creating a machine and we'll just forget it and next day if we check it you know we'll be getting additional bit because we have not deleted or switched off the machines and all so we have a lab based on like all services so this is just one like uh, you know creating a virtual machine and if you and we have advanced also like a terraform fundamentals smart contracts and everything so the uh, cloud storage uh, like if you are from a development background then you can test these also as i said uh, you know app engine so this is comes from java and python so you are from like a sql uh, developer right plsql or just yeah. SQL? Yeah, SQL, SQL. Okay, so you might be interesting in BigQuery. So BigQuery is kind of a you know uh, database in GCP. So for this, they have using uh, format almost similar to the SQL. And I have only uh, limited understanding of this BigQuery because this BigQuery services and all most will be com uh, comes under uh, data engineering kind of profile. But uh, since you are from, you know, okay. Yes. So BigQuery, one more thing is like we can export the building data to BigQuery and then we can analyze. So if you locate external, okay. So I think only there is only some modification. So this all almost similar like uh, I'm all not similar. Almost same like SQL, right? A stochastic from yeah, 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 yeah. database work or cost is greater than zero. So so this is how you can analyze. And that's a very other other services. So yeah, this is also same. Select. Yeah, this almost looks like uh, SQL. So you can uh, try that also. I mean, based mm -hmm. on our uh, post duration. Uh, compared to AWS, they have less services, right? Uh, compared to AWS. Hmm? Yeah, services you are telling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, services compared to AWS, GCP uh, no, services are very less. But AWS is having, you know, if you check in EC2 itself, they'll be having lots and lots of services. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, AWS, I have one AWS migration, but it's having many services. But GCP have only few services, but it's more like uh, very precise, I can say. So, are you have you worked on any AWS kind of projects or no? No, 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 no. I did not work. Uh... Okay, okay. Right. I know the basic detailing about it. Oh, okay, okay.
Ya, ini ada kosmos. Nordzor. Okay, then thanks for joining. So if you have any question, you can contact with the visual path.